Alrighty, welcome to um, the advanced series, Train and Empower Your Remote Staff with Zoho Remotely. So my name is Lyra Mackay and I'll be joined by Gopal today, um, who will join us a little bit later and talk about the product today, which is Showtime. And he'll also go into a, a bit of a demo on that one as well. So this is us here, um, just to give you an idea of, you know, face-to-face -face, um, what we look like, because I know we can't uh, meet you right now because of all the lockdowns that are happening um, in Australia and globally as well. So before I get too far into it, I just wanted to do a few little bits and pieces of housekeeping. So it's going to be best to view this on Chrome or Firefox or the Meeting Viewer app if you're using a mobile or tablet. Uh, if you do have a bad connection, please try and refresh your browser and <clears throat> if that doesn't work and you're not using Chrome or Firefox, switch to that. Um, otherwise, we will be recording this webinar, so I will send you a link to the recording afterwards. If there are any tech issues, I know with all of us, um, with many of us still working from home in Australia, I know my internet has not been very good. It's in general not very good uh, here in Australia compared to other countries, but yeah, anyway, we will be sending you a recording. Uh, and then if you have any questions, please post them in the Q&A um, as well. So this is the agenda for today. Um, first thing I'm going to take you through a little bit about Zoho, and then I will talk about Zoho Remotely. This webinar today is focusing on Zoho Remotely. So I know that a, f a majority of the people who have joined the previous uh, advanced series of webinars have been Zoho One customers. Um, so I'm going to do a little poll in a second to get an idea of where you're all coming from. Um, but because we're focused on Zoho remotely today, I will go over that. And then we will dive into Showtime, uh, the product that we'll be talking about today. Uh, at the end, we will go through a few resources for you. Um, and then you can ask all your questions and feel free to post in the questions tab throughout if you do have any questions um, and you just think of them and you want to get them down, that's totally fine. We'll have a look at them throughout and maybe answer some, uh, but we will have a dedicated Q&A time at the end. So I wanted to do a quick poll now um, to get an idea of how familiar you are with Zoho. You should see a poll pop up in the screen. Uh, you just get one vote, so just choose the most relevant um, one there. Okay, so a lot of you are Zoho One users. That's fine. That's um, that's great. You'll still get a lot out of this focusing on Showtime today. Um, and then, okay, a few of you are actually using Zoho remotely, so that's awesome. Cool, thanks for doing that one. Just helps me get an idea of, you know, we've already planned out the webinar, but sort of where we should put our focus on um, and then for the future as well. So for anyone who is not that familiar with Zoho, um, this is just a nice little slide to give you a brief overview. So Zoho as a company has been around for over 22 years. Um, we have over 40 different applications that we have developed. Um, one of them we are using today to run this webinar, which is uh, Zoho Meeting, and another webinar um, application that we will actually be talking about today, which is Showtime. So, um, And then, of course, the other apps available in Remotely and all of the apps available in Zoho One. Um, we're across 190 different countries, and we have over 50 million users worldwide. And we also have over 8,000 employees worldwide. So a lot of them are based in India, um, some of them in the US and then Europe and Japan, uh, and then a few of us are in Australia. So including me, my colleague Lauren, and a few other um, of our Australian team in Melbourne and in Canberra. Um, and Lauren and I are on the Gold Coast for anyone who's interested. Um, and so all of our employees at Zoho have transitioned to working remotely in the last um, few months. And one of the main reasons we could do that is because we all run on Zoho products. So we all use Zoho 
um, and that just helps us maintain communication and collaboration and just stay really connected um, in our teams and as a, an entire organization. So all of our employees at Zoho and our customers and all of our applications are one big connected ecosystem. Um, and that's what we like to think about when we talk about Zoho. So just quickly, um, our promise to you is that uh, we're very big on privacy within Zoho. Um, we really value our privacy as a company. Uh, so we don't own your data, you do. We will never sell your data and we'll never do any advertisements inside our products. So you'll never see any of that. Um, and I think that's just really nice to know, especially if you are using Zoho remotely or considering Zoho remotely or know someone who might um, want to use it because it is a free application, a free suite of applications at the moment. Um, when you think of free products, you usually think of ads. So that's just one thing that I like to point out, um, you know, initially. And then that's also really nice to know for all the people who are using other Zoho products or who are using Zoho One. Okay, so for those of you who are interested, um, this is how we like to set out our product offering. So at the bottom, you can see our application layer and those apps are all available um, as individual applications. And then you can buy, uh, you can purchase a few different ones if you're interested. Uh, if you are looking at a few different ones, I would definitely recommend choosing one of our platforms. They usually work out cheaper than um, getting a few applications just by themselves. Uh, so you can see here we have the customer experience platform, finance, HR, collaboration, commerce. We also have workplace um, and that is where Zoho remotely fits in. Uh, so then on the top we have Zoho One and that is our big bundle of applications and services um, and it's built on a really, really strong platform and we like to call that the operating system for business. So. These are the applications included in Zoho Remotely. Um, we have had a few other webinars uh, of, of the advanced series on some of these. I believe we had um, Assist last week and Work Drive the week before. If you're interested in seeing those, let me know in the Q&A or send me an email afterwards and I can send you a link to those. Um, next week, we will be holding one on a meeting and then the week after we'll be doing one on projects and sprints. So feel free to register for those. I'll show you where you can do that at the end of the webinar. Um, and basically with these 10 apps, we like to split them up into four different categories. And that is communication, collaboration, productivity and remote assistance. Now, this is how we like to uh, break them up into those different categories. So with communication, we have click meeting and showtime. For collaboration, we have work drive projects and sprints. For productivity, we have writer sheet and show, which is our office suite. And for remote assistance, we have Zoho Assist. Um, so today, like I've mentioned, we're gonna be talking about Showtime, which is one of our communication tools. Um, so yeah, it's our remote training tool. Um, so now I will pass it on to Gopal, who will uh, talk to us a bit more about what that, um, application can do and also uh, go into the demo. So just bear with us while we pass it over. Thank you, uh, Lira, for uh, the wonderful presentation. Hello, all. Uh, I'm Gopal. I'm the marketer for uh, Showtime. And uh, I'll now be walking you through the topic at hand. But before that, let me quickly uh, share my screen and uh, so that you can see my presentation. Hope you're all able to see my screen. So today, we'll, uh, I'll be walking you through uh, Zoho Showtime and how it can uh, be your team's uh, remote training tool. So Showtime is a single comprehensive solution for all your remote training needs. 
uh, now that um, entire world is facing a pandemic and most of the countries are in lockdown, this also means that businesses have moved remotely. Uh, all the majority of the workforce are connecting from their home or from places that they are that they are safe at, and uh, these collaboration and work and productivity is happening uh, in a remote fashion. But then when we are uh, collaborating remotely with your workforce, um, how do you ensure that your employees are continuously learning as they were uh, when you are working on premise? So that is where a remote training tool comes into play. Even when your uh, staff are uh, placed at different locations, you can still connect with them, engage with them, and deliver uh, impactful training so that your organization's learning curve uh, never stops. So with Showtime, um, you can uh, help. You, Showtime helps you every step of the way. That is uh, right from uh, setting up your training team, uh, building a digital profile for uh, your training team. Say with Showtime's uh, uh, single console, you'll be able to add all your team of trainers if you're the head of the training team. And uh, you, all these trainers can independently run their sessions from, the sing, from a single Showtime portal. And as a head of the training team, you'll be able to uh, manage and oversee all the sessions that are happening. And during the session, as a trainer, you can um, uh, engage with them live in real time uh, through Q&A polls, uh, by sharing presentations, or any course materials that you want to start, uh, share with your staff. And you can also record the entire session and uh, build real-time interaction. Similarly, as uh, participants, your uh, uh, employees can join the session from Showtime's mobile app, or they can join in from their computer devices and uh, ask questions to you, take part in the polls that you conduct, uh, have uh, chat discussions, both private and open chat. So this way they get enriching learning experience even when they are in a virtual setup. So that is about uh, Showtime theoretically. Now I'll share my screen and walk you into the product straight away so that we all get a hands-on on how Showtime can be used for training. So please give me a moment while I quickly share my screen. All right, so I can see that everything is good. Uh, so let me uh, carry on. So once you log on to showtime.zoho.com, be it as a Zoho One customer or as a Zoho Remotely customer, uh, you will land on this page. Uh, but before you get started with a session, you can quickly set up your team. How do you do that? By clicking on the administration tab on the left pane. So this admin console acts as a single place for the as a, a head of the organization or the head of the training team to set things up. Uh, over here, when you click on the manage users tab, you can see uh, there are uh, already a team of trainers who are added to this portal. So if you want to add more trainers who deliver training in your organization, then you click on invite users and type in the email address, give them a role, assign them a role, and uh, uh, let them be part of this uh, uh, Showtime team that you have built. So once you have set this up, um, you can uh, then move on to the sessions tab. So with this, uh, you would have uh, invited all your trainers and uh, you are all ready to uh, create and launch sessions. So to create a training session and schedule one, you click on the Create Session button. When you click on the Create Session, Showtime offers you three types of uh, training uh, formats. First is the remote session. That is the most popular one where uh, you conduct live virtual classroom sessions with uh, by broadcasting your audio and video to hundreds of participants. And then in a face-to-face -face session, which is quite unlikely now, it is the a session where uh, all your participants are sitting right in front of you in an auditorium or in any physical classroom. And then on demand is nothing but uh, uploading recorded materials that you have or any course material videos that you have and uh, let, your, uh, let your participants or employees watch at their own convenience on demand. So these are the three formats of delivery. Now let us focus more on remote session because that is what will come handy to us uh, uh, during this current time. So let me click on the remote session here and uh, give in a name. Say if it's about um, sales training for your staff, then uh, just uh, type in the session name, give a brief description about it. And uh, you can also choose if the session is going to happen on every day or a weekly or monthly basis, then you don't have to go about creating it manually. You can just automate this um, session occurrences. 
can then pick a start date. Say if the session is going to happen tomorrow, then you can choose tomorrow's date. Uh, you can choose the time. If it's at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, then you can choose uh, 10 a.m. And uh, the session can go on, a single showtime uh, live session can go on up to eight hours, which is still quite unlikely because you know, any virtual uh, live uh, a training or a remote session might not go beyond the three or four hours um, uh, at the maximum. So let me, ideal case, let me just choose 60 minutes as a duration here. And then um, you can, as a head of the a training team you can either host the training yourself or you can assign this to any of the uh, trainers in your team so that uh, they can take over the session you can make them the host and once you're done with the session settings you click on the create session and you land on the uh, session details page here so on the session details page the first thing that you see is the unique url uh, as the attendee join link so this is the url you should be sharing with your staff uh, so that they'll they'll be able to click on it and join from their uh, join the session from their laptop or mobile devices and uh, the best part about showtime is um, you can add as many trainers as you want inside a single live session. So there can be co-presenters or co-trainers inside your session. So you can be the main host and you can hire in an expert from outside who wants to, uh, who you think can upskill your staff, then you can add that person as well by clicking on the add co-trainer button and choose any trainer who can be part of this uh, session. So you can have as many trainers inside a session and you can transfer controls and all of you can uh, present during the session. Um, and uh, you can also, the uh, co-presenter can also uh, take part in chat and also play the role of a moderator. So this way there is seamless interaction happening throughout the session. And then unlike other training tools, uh, Showtime helps you upload your course material beforehand. So most of the tools out there in the market allow you to do only a screen sharing to share any material. But in Showtime, you can pick materials from Showtime's library, the lab material library that you, have the, you would have built that you see on the left pane here. Or you can upload any present PPT or PDF from your computer. So for uh, for instance, let me now pick a session from, uh, pick a material from um, the library, and I'm adding a, I'm adding a presentation now that I need to be showing inside the session. I can also add a video that I can uh, broadcast during the session. So uh, let me quickly add a video as well. So I can, these materials can be any number. Um, it can be of any format. It can be a presentation or a video. So this way, um, your presenters are in for, uh, uh, I mean, a thorough learning experience because your uh, training is not restricted to a single material alone. And then um, to uh, quickly test the participants to know whether they are following you, you can launch polls. It can also be on a specific topic. You can click on create polls and create uh, polls of multiple choice, text box or rating. So there is no restriction on the number of polls that you can pre-feed into the system. You can also launch, create and launch polls even during the live uh, session. Uh, if you are very frequent in hosting sessions and you have a poll library built, then you can in, uh, import uh, library from your, you import these polls from your library as well. So let me, um, import a few polls that I need to be showing inside this uh, test session that I'm going to launch. And apart from the polls and the materials that you share broadcast, um, what if you want to share any reference uh, links or any ebooks that you want your staff to uh, go back and download and refer to uh, learn uh, further, then you can use the handouts feature. You can, using handouts, you, uh, uh, you add any uh, supplementary ebooks that your uh, staff have to uh, uh, download and read. So that way, uh, there is uh, learning happening even after the session. So that is about uploading materials. Uh, now, um, if you want to invite your staff, you click on the people tab here. So to invite your staff, if you have a, a set of email IDs on your uh, 
uh, on an Excel sheet, then you can quickly upload them um, by clicking on uh, custom invites and upload. Say if you have uh, about uh, 100 staff, the 100 employees that you need to invite for a session, then you can uh, upload their details on an Excel sheet and then a custom email uh, will be sent from uh, Showtime itself. You don't have to manually go to your inbox or uh, do a campaign software to do all this. And apart from this, uh, we also have other uh, a variety of settings that uh, Showtime offers. So here you can see a bunch of settings. Uh, first is um, uh, you have the questions. See, most trainings, even in face to even in a uh, in person training or be it a remote session, uh, the participants are generally hesitant to ask questions, especially if the questions are visible to everyone. They might feel a little shy. So if you think uh, you want to enable questions privacy, then you can check this box so that the questions, whatever participants ask, appear only to the trainer. And similarly, if you think the training needs to be very focused uh, with minimal interaction and a lot of uh, uh, talk that is happening from the trainer side alone, then you can disable the open chat room where participants uh, can uh, have a discussion. Um, if this is enabled, then everybody can chat with each other. Uh, even the participants can chat with the trainers and other, part other uh, people inside the session. And similarly, if you want to uh, record the session automatically then you click on the uh, you check this box so that the uh, session starts recording uh, from start to end and you can also apart from polls if you want to uh, quickly assess your staff at the end of the session through a long questionnaire of sorts then you can uh, click on the evaluation tab and uh, add questions here so these questions can be of uh, multiple um, uh, formats. It can be a text area, multiple choice, and so on. So this questionnaire will appear to them as a survey or a, a question form at the end of the session after you um, exit the session. So they can post their feedback here, or you can also quickly ask a question on the topic that you just uh, discussed. So all this will be available to you. Um, in the format of analytics, robust analytics after you complete the session. So that is about the session settings that we had to see before launching. So now what I'm going to do, I'm also going to uh, join as a participant on the adjacent tab so that I can show you what happens uh, uh, in, uh, from the participant screen as well. So I'm going to launch the session now, but before that I'm also joining in as a participant using this join link. And uh, once I'm ready, I'll uh, launch the session as a trainer. So by clicking on the launch button here. So I'm launching the session now. So as a trainer, when I launch the session, it asks uh, my, for my microphone and camera access so that I can audio and video broadcast myself. So in this case, as you can see, uh, the audio and video can be broadcasted just like any other uh, virtual classroom software. So once you're inside the session, um, you will be on this warm up screen over here. You can see a participant has joined. So let me quickly go in onto the participant screen. Even for the participant, the audio and uh, uh, mic check happens. And uh, let me just type in my name so that I can be the test participant for, for this uh, session. So now moving back to the trainer's window. Over here, I can see I have a participant. Um, if I have more trainers inside the session, I can see their name as well. Once everything is ready, I can, I'll click on start broadcast so that the session goes live. So, so over here is where uh, you need to, on the bottom pane, you have a bunch of options. Uh, you can click on the share material button to pick the sl presentation slide that you want to show. So when you click on broadcast, the presentation starts appearing because you have already uploaded them, uh, preloaded them into the session. So you, we have a slide deck uh, that appears here. As a trainer, you can navigate through slides and uh, present them one by one, which your participants can see. And uh, apart from slides, if you want to show the video that you have uploaded, then you click on the video instead of the slide and uh, click on broadcast so that the video starts playing. So when I click on the video, the video starts playing on the uh, on the screen. So this your participant can instead of the presentation now, your participant will see the uh, video that you have uploaded. 
apart from sharing materials if you want to show anything else on the internet or walk them through an app as a demo just as i am doing now then you can use the screen share option so when you click on screen share you can uh, choose to share your entire screen or uh, specific uh, chrome tab say for instance if i want to um, open a youtube video and show them something interesting on youtube then i can start screen share and uh, click on youtube so that whatever i'm whatever i'm showing on screen gets shared to the participant so this way your uh, training is not only restricted to the materials it can be a product demo or anything else interesting that you want to show so once you're done with the screen share you click on stop screen share um, and you're back to the material that you are showing now, over here you also have the start and stop recording button so you can use this uh, to uh, record the entire session you can record as many videos as you want even inside a single session by clicking on start and stop recording so that creates a playlist of videos it's not necessary that you have to record the entire session at one go so once you're done with that um, let me now move on to the participant screen so now that we have seen um, uh, how a trainer can present content let us now see how a participant can start uh, engaging with the trainer. So on the participant screen, as you see, the participant will be able to see the trainer's video, uh, any other course material that is being shown. And if the participant has a doubt, then the employee can ask the questions. Uh, once the employee asks the question, let us now go to the trainer screen to see how it appears. So on the trainer screen, a pop-up comes on the questions tab. And you can see which participant has asked what question. So as a trainer, you can choose to type in the answer, or you can project this question to the entire uh, um, uh, uh, entire classroom so that all the staff who are inside the session to learn will be able to see the question. So uh, this way, you can uh, pick and choose whichever question you want to answer. And as a trainer, if you want to quickly um, run a poll or uh, assess them, you can choose any poll of your choice. Uh, and these polls are already pre-fed into the system while we were uh, creating the session. If you want to create one during the session, you can still do it by clicking on the Create Poll uh, button. So let me now launch a poll and see how a participant can um, um, uh, take part of this poll. So as a participant, I can click on submitting the answer. Uh, this poll appears to all the uh, all the trainees who are inside the session simultaneously, and all, all of them can submit their entries. Likewise, you can launch any number of poll one after the other, one after the other, uh, as and when you think uh, it is required. After the poll, we have the chat option. So uh, as a trainer, you can send in a welcome message, or you can uh, make any announcements on the chat. Uh, similarly, even as participants, uh, they can also go to the chat window here. I'm on the participant screen now. Um, they can also take part in the chat. Uh, and what if the participant wants to have a private conversation with the trainer, if it is something that they are too shy to ask in the open chat discussion here, then they, the participant can click on the uh, chat with trainers button. So this is a private chat room for the trainee and the trainer alone. So. Um, they can have a they can have a private conversation which other uh, other trainees inside the room will not be able to see so this way there is personalized interaction as well so once uh, the participant uh, engages in such conversations uh, they can also click on the handouts button here to download any ebooks or reference materials that you have uh, uploaded as a trainer and what if the participant wants to speak to the trainer and ask questions uh, orally? So that is why the open mic option comes into play. So on the participant screen, you have the mic icon. So when they click on the mic icon and request for access, so the participant can request for access and um, by clicking on the request mic icon. And for the trainer over here, if you see under the attendees tab, you, uh, the specific uh, specific trainees request pops up. And uh, as a host, you have the right to whether approve it or deny it. So this way, uh, you ensure that the session does not become chaotic because you do not unmute everybody's mic at one go. You pick and choose which participant can speak and who cannot. Uh, that is so that there is a regulated uh, interaction happening and this will also build meaningful conversations uh, throughout the session. 
So that is about uh, how you can build interaction uh, inside the session. So uh, I'll now end this session so, since we have seen all kind of interaction that is happening uh, inside the session. So now once I exit, we will see how the uh, survey appears to the trainees and we'll also see uh, um, what we can, uh, the kind of uh, statistics that we can check on the analytics. And I click on the end button. Uh, I can exit button, I can click on the um, end session. And once I end the session, um, the question, uh, the survey form appears here for all the participants. The participants can um, submit their entries. All of these details will be available uh, um, as analytics um, for the trainer. So now as a trainer, uh, you can check the analytics, but uh, instead what I'll do, I'll pick a session where I had built robust analytics and show you how comprehensive the data is. So I'll move on to one of my past sessions and I'll choose uh, a session with uh, a good set of statistics uh, to show you. So over here, when you click on the analytics tab, uh, you can see uh, the comprehensive data set that appears, the engagement level based on the time spent by each attendee, uh, how the questions were, the polls were, and so on. And if you want to drill down each and every element of this, then you can click on the questions tab to see the entire question history. The questions in case you had, uh, say there were uh, hundreds of questions and you couldn't answer everything during the session, then uh, uh, you can see the question history here and pick the one that you that you left unanswered and reach out to that specific staff to uh, clarify their doubts and then similarly you can also see the chat history that happened both the public chat and the private chat uh, that happened uh, all the transcript is available when you click on the polls tab um, and the view poll result Every trainee, every participant's specific response is available to you uh, as statistics. So uh, this will help you. Uh, um, this will give you an idea of which uh, employee requires uh, more help, whether they have understood whatever you have uh, trained them on, and so on. And finally, we have the evaluation tab. In the evaluation, similar to polls, again you can check uh, every participant's answer question-wise, participant-wise. And uh, this will also give you an idea how effective your session was because they would have given you honest feedback on uh, um, the effectiveness of the session. So you can then go back and rework on your uh, course or you can also schedule more sessions to train them better. So that is about the analytics. All of this can also be exported uh, as a trainer and you can also share this with your entire team. Um, even as the admin of the Showtime portal, you will have access to all these sessions to uh, um, go through this data. So that is about um, Sh um, Showtime's remote session. So apart from this, we also have the on-demand session where uh, in the on-demand session is quite uh, similar to any uh, recorded session that you have. Um, you can uh, quickly click on the create session button and choose on demand so once you choose on demand here you're given the session name and description and just uh, upload any video that you have so let me just uh, give a name for the on demand session description and then I create the session. So similar to remote session, you also have the option to upload materials. The only difference in on-demand is there'll not be any instructor present inside the session. The, your participants can click and launch uh, the session whenever they want. They can watch it just as they watch any YouTube or Netflix video, and they can submit their test and uh, survey, uh, and then you can check all this in the analytics. So this will help you set a self-paced uh, learning format as well, apart from live session delivery. So that is about uh, Showtime's demo. So I'll now move back to the presentation and uh, we'll just take over the ne next segment of our webinar, that is the Q&A. So I'll now um, transfer control back to Lira so that she can um, take over the questions and we'll be happy to take questions from you about Zoho One remotely and also specifically about Showtime. Awesome, thank you, Gopal. Does anyone have any questions? Um, I actually saw one on there. 
from Katie. She asked, do they have to be Zoho users to be a trainer or can an outside person uh, be a trainer? So did you want to answer that one, Gopal? Yes. Uh, hi, Katie. Uh, thank you for the question. So uh, I can see that Lira has uh, answered um, a part of it. Yes, um, uh, to be a co-trainer, they need to be uh, inside uh, your portal as users. They should have signed up for Showtime. But very soon, we are also launching the guest trainer capability, which means that anybody from outside, any non-Zoho users, any non-Showtime users can also be added to a session on an ad hoc basis. So if there is a trainer who you want to hire externally just for a session alone, or you just want to invite them over as an expert speaker, then you can use the guest trainer option. This will be available to you in a couple of weeks' time. Awesome. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? I'll just let you um, send in your questions. Uh, just keep sending them in if you have any more. And I'll just go through the resources that I have for you um, quickly. So on this slide, you can see, uh, and I'll share these links with you all in a second. So if you're wanting some more information on remotely, maybe you know someone uh, that you think uh, remotely could be really helpful for. Remember, it is free until the 1st of July. So at that point, um, we are going to assess the coronavirus situation globally and see if there's still uh, demand for the free bundle of remotely applications. And we will either extend the, the free time or we'll put a, um, a price tag on it. We'll put it into one of our uh, platforms. And if you know anything about Zoho's pricing, it will be relatively cheap. Uh, we don't know exactly all the details yet, but we will tell you well in advance um, before we're going to transfer it from free to a paid version. Um, but yeah, if you're after more information on Remotely, that you can head to that link there. Um, specifically for more information on Showtime, you can head to that second link here. Um, the Help tab is like the Resources tab. So there you can find... Uh, user guides, more information, uh, lots of webinars as well. And then if you're after more remotely webinars, you can head to that third link. If you do have any other questions um, that you think of after the webinar today or any other um, really specific questions that you might have on Zoho One or something else within uh, about Zoho, feel free to email me as well. Uh, and then this link here uh, sends you to a page that we've created with a lot of relief initiatives, um, different business continuity programs that a lot of the uh, individual applications have developed. And then we also have some virtual community meetups in Australia, um, a very informative COVID-19 dashboard, some educational resources, uh, and then links to our Zoho One online workshops. There's another one of those happening tomorrow. Um, and then, yeah, we have two more sessions of these advanced series uh, next week and the week after as well. There's some information on that. Um, and I'll just grab some links. And I'll copy them into the Q&A. I'll broadcast it. Hopefully you'll all be able to see it. Okay, and there's another question from Katie. So with the on-demand session, can you embed these in, uh, in a website for people to access? So Gopal, did you want to answer that one as well? Yeah, sure, Lira, I'll take it. Um, hi, Katie, thank you for your question again. Um, Katie wants to know, um, if on-demand session can be embedded onto a website that people can click and uh, view, yes, you can. Uh, we give you an iframe link uh, to embed the entire session that you've created. You can just put it on your own website and uh, people can straight away click on it and uh, they will be taken to the Showtimes page there from there and uh, for them to uh, watch the video. Uh, if you have enabled registration for this session, then they will be taken to the registration form first uh, from the embed link. Uh, once they register for the on-demand session, they can then uh, straight away get into the video. So it does work. Okay, awesome. Does anyone else have any other questions? 
So Katie has a follow up question. So is there a limited time for the on demand session? Uh, well, there is no limit on the time. It it purely depends on how long you want the on demand session to be published as a trainer. So the moment as a trainer you publish and you keep it on for a week or months together, and then you unpublish them on a certain day, from that point on the on demand session will not be available to the viewers. So I hope I have answered your question, Katie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, awesome. I think that is all of the questions. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to hop on and watch this webinar. I hope it was really useful for you and I hope you can join us on um, the next two advanced series of webinars um, over the next few weeks. And maybe we will see you on one of the Zoho One workshops or the virtual community meetups. Um, and then hopefully when we can get all of the, you know, when we can start up events again, um, we'll be able to meet in person. So I think that's it for all the questions. Um, so I'm going to hop off now, but I wanted to say thank you so much to Go Paul for joining us and to Showtime and showing us that demo. Um, thank you, Lira, for the opportunity and thank you everyone for uh, your questions and being a patient uh, listeners.